a woman one day tried many positions but daily grew worse than the Bible we're told but when she had heard she came to Jesus and she found what she for body and soul If I could just touch the hem of his garment If I could just touch one part of his robe I know I'd be My sins all forgiven. If I could just touch him, I know I'd be whole. Blind Bartimaeus said, By the wayside begging, nobody would help him that life's weary road. Then Jesus passed by, and he heard his sad crying. He reached down his hand, and he healed him that day. If I could but touch the hem of his garment, if I could just touch Just touch him, I know I'd be whole. One night I sat in a church pew praying, nobody to help me down life's dreary road. Jesus passed by, and he heard my sad crying. He reached down his hand, and he saved me that day. If I could just touch the hem of his garment, if I could but touch If I could but touch him, I know I'd be whole. If I could but touch him, I know I'd be I'm headed. 
fit for a home built by God alone. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, I am. Where the only things there that's been made by man are the scars in the hands of Jesus. All covered with snow that's fallen from heaven above. It makes me feel small, hardly nothing at all to know that I'll be. my God alone. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I am where the only thing there that's been made by man are the scars in the hands of Jesus. enjoyed that this morning I believe that uh, the reasons those wounds uh, the Bible said uh, he received in the house of his friends I believe the reason they'll be there is because there'll be a reminder of what it cost that we could be in that wonderful place together I believe every once in a while down here, we need a reminder of what it cost. I believe America needs a reminder today of what it cost that we could enjoy the freedom that we have today. A lot of people have forgotten what it cost. And I appreciate the price that's been paid not only for my earthly freedom, but for my eternal freedom in the Lord Jesus. Hi, Sister Karen. It's good to see you this morning. That blesses me. Brother Gail, good to see you this morning. Amen. I never did know Brother Gail to be much of a front bench feller. But uh, I know what it is now. I roped you off, didn't I, brother? Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you this. It's going to be a happy day in this preacher's life when I can tear them ropes down. I mean that. When I can hug your neck again, we can fellowship and uh, just have a grand time together. 
I want to say this this morning. I talked to Brother James Jones yesterday morning. Um, Brother Long, I know you know Brother James. He's preached in several of the Rock of Ages conferences. We had him here for revival several years ago. And, and Brother James knows personally three or four preachers. I didn't keep up and count them, but I know it was three or four preachers and pastors that's passed away with COVID. I'll just tell you that, not to scare you, but it is something that Brother James agreed with me. He said, Preacher, I believe you're right. We don't need to be afraid of it, but we need to respect it. And uh, so I, I encourage you to keep your guard up, especially at the gas station. I, I think about that and how many people in an hour's time touch that pump and and all of that, but uh, just keep your guard up. Be as careful as you can. God's been good to us around here, uh, other than Brother Coulter and then Brother Randall. Of course, Brother Randall, we haven't seen him since COVID started, but we haven't had anybody in the church that's had it other than those two, and we're grateful that they're all right. I want to say thank the Lord for Brother J.W. I mean that. Brother J.W. is right where he wanted to be for a long time now. He's home. Amen. He's not suffering anymore. And I appreciate Brother J.W. I appreciate him starting this work years ago. And uh, he, he's been a good friend. Brother J.W. is undoubtedly, I'm not kidding now, one of the funniest preachers I've ever been around in my life. First time I ever went to hear him in a meeting, and I could never do it like he did. But he told the story about riding a horse. And he got into this story, and I mean, I was right into it with him. He talked about how that horse was bucking and how that horse almost throwed him. He said that horse would have got me if that manager from Kmart hadn't come out there and unplugged it. <laughs> I'm telling you, Brother J.W., he was into something all the time. And a precious, precious man of God. And I appreciate him. I appreciate you being here today. It was an encouragement to me to see the parking lot. And I long for the day when we can all get back together. Amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, I'd like for you to turn with me to the book of Nahum. If you're like me, sometimes you have trouble finding those minor prophets. Uh, if you look at Jonah, if you find Jonah, and then Micah, then Nahum. I have been caught before, Brother Long. A lot of preachers wouldn't admit this, but I have been caught all the way over in the front of my Bible trying to find it. Amen. Where they list them in order. And uh, like I said, a lot of people may not admit that, but Nahum is called one of the minor prophets it's not minor because of its message but it's minor because of its size there's not a lot of a lot of words in the the book of Nahum three chapters but there's a powerful powerful message if you're able to in reverence to God's word stand with me this morning and let's read from the word of God I do desire your prayers. I, I don't know whether it's because we're just doing one service or what, but it just seems like I come to church so full and it takes a long time sometimes to empty out, give you what God's given me. But I thank him. I thank him for giving us something to preach. It's more than just opening a book or a commentary and, but it's meeting with God and getting God's message for the hour the word of God said in Nahum chapter 1 verse 1 the burden of Nineveh the book of the vision of Nahum the Elkishite God is jealous and the Lord revengeth the Lord revengeth and is furious the Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. 
the Lord is slow to anger, great in power, and will not at all acquit the wicked. A lot of things in America being done after dark these days, and a lot of people think they're getting by with it, but I want to promise you something. They're not getting by with it. They may not have it on camera, but God's got it on record. Their day's coming. The word of God said the Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm. I couldn't help Brother Gail but think about that hurricane when it hit the shore down there. They said the most powerful in I believe a hundred years when Laura came in to St. Charles and into Louisiana and Texas down there. It has really, really tore up the, the countryside. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebuketh the sea and maketh it dry. That goes along with your lesson this morning, Brother Steve. Yeah, he did dry it up, Brother Steve. Yes, I believe that. I believe they crossed on dry ground. I believe it was so dry. It was like when I was mowing the yard the other day. It looked like a dust bowl. Amen. The Bible said here, and he drieth up all the rivers, Bashan languisheth, and Carmel, and the flower of Lebanon languisheth. The mountains quake at him, and the hills melt, and the earth is burned at his presence. Yea, the world and all that dwell therein. Who can stand before his indignation? And who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire, and the rocks are thrown down by him. Our text this morning will be verse number seven. It seems like verse number seven is put in an unlikely place in the word of God. But this morning, God has verse number seven right where he wants it. And God has this message right where he wants it in this hour that we're living in. In the verse number seven, he said, the Lord is good. Would you say that with me? The Lord is good. A stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knoweth them that trust (laughs) in him I said a while ago that a lot of ungodly wicked things are going on and God knows about that but he also knows my name he knows your name if you're a child of God he knows where you are he knows exactly what you're going through and he cares for you And he cares for me. You can be seated. Pray for us this morning. Father in heaven, thank you this morning for the privilege to be here at Bible Way today. Lord, it is my prayer that something will be said that would be an encouragement to your people. Lord, I realize this morning that Jesus is coming soon. I realize, our Father, this morning that in the midst of the darkness, there's a great light that you want us to see today. And I pray, our Father, that you would help us, help us, Lord, through this message. God, that one that's unsaved, Lord, I pray that you would help them. I pray, Lord, that Jesus would manifest his presence Lord, draw that one, our Father, that's drifted away. Draw that one, Lord, that's lost in sin. Lord, you said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Lord, you said this, signifying the death that you were about to die. Thank you, Lord, for Calvary. Thank you, Lord, for your people. I pray now, Lord, you take control of the service. May our hearts and our minds be focused, our Father, on thee, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. In the middle of the message here, the word of God calls it the burden. 
If you look up the meaning of that word, it means heavy. This is heavy on Nahum's heart. I want to say this today. God's people ought to be carrying a burden over what's going on in our world today. We ought to have a burden for the lost. We ought to have a burden, amen, for our children. We ought to have a burden for our grandchildren. I, I saw an article last week where they're, they don't want certain things watched. They're hoping that the parents will skip it, amen, certain things that are being taught to our children. And I want you to know this, beloved. Listen to me carefully. The Word of God will never be replaced by the wisdom of man. What we need is the Bible. What we need is the teachings of the Word of God. The prophet Nahum, his word, his name means comfort or consolation. And so he's bringing a message that's heavy. It's a message of judgment. And beloved, listen to me carefully. If you read the whole counsel of God, there's some heavy stuff in here. There's judgment that's coming, amen, upon this world that we live in. There's judgment that's coming upon the sinner. There's judgment that's coming upon the earth. And it's a heavy message, but in the middle of it all, this prophet whose name means consolation, it means comfort, is going to bring comfort in verse number 7 when he said, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. This burden here was concerning Nineveh. A hundred years prior to where we're beginning in this text today, Jonah was required of God to go down to Nineveh and cry out against it. And little did Jonah imagine that Nineveh would repent. And now, a hundred years later, Nineveh's back in the mess that it was before the preaching of Jonah. You say, preacher, I didn't know a nation could go backwards. That's exactly what we're doing. We're not getting closer and closer to God. And I'm going to tell you this, the average Christian's not getting closer and closer to God. We're living in a generation, beloved, where it's a challenge to walk with God. It's a challenge to be more like Jesus. It's a challenge to keep your head up and your chin up when you look at the news and look at what's going on in the world around us. But God sends a message by Nahum. A hundred years later, they've forsaken the Lord and judgment is coming. In the middle of the judgment, the message of judgment, he has some words of comfort in verse number seven. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. I want to give you three things today, just simple things. But I want to give you three things in this verse that Nahum is giving us that, that ought to be a help to us. The first thing I see in the verse is Nahum's announcement. He says, God is good. God is good. We used to say all the time. But I want you to know, beloved, listen, it's one thing to say it and it's another thing to know it. I believe that Nahum knew, even though he's pronouncing a message that's heavy and a message of judgment, he knew that God is good. I read something. I want you to think about it. The U.S. as of this morning is $26.5 trillion in debt. But after reading that statement, I want to just stop and say this, God is still good. I'm telling you, the cities of America are on fire. They're protesting, they're rioting, they're killing one another. But I want to stop and say, God is good in the midst of it all. Socialism is being promoted by many in America. But that does not change the fact that God is good. Politicians are disrespecting one another. They're sowing deceit and dangerous rhetoric. 
I'm talking about the leader in the House of Representatives is already saying, beloved, listen, uh, that we just need to hang in there. We'll win in time, uh, regardless of how the election goes. Uh, I'm telling you, beloved, listen, I know this from the bottom of my heart. God is good, even when politicians are not good. Men's hearts are failing them for fear, but God is good. The murder rates are rising in New York City and other cities around America. But I know this, God is good. My son-in-law, Bob, was following a girl this morning. He got behind her on Carter's Valley Road. He was supposed to be at work, I think, at 5 o'clock. Some people don't even know that that time exists on the clock, but it does. 5 o'clock in the morning, he got behind her. Brother Steve, she was all over the road. He called dispatch and reported it and then stayed behind her and watched the wreck. She hit somebody on the other side, glanced off down into a trailer court. Bob said the other person was shook up and knocked out for a brief period of time. Probably the airbag, he said, probably knocked him out. Said the girl didn't even know she was in the world. I told him she'll wake up about four or five o'clock this afternoon and realize where she is. You say, preacher, why would you talk about that? Because last night, beloved, listen, people were looking for answers in a bottle that you'll only find in a Bible. God is good. And the world doesn't understand, but you and I as God's people, let's lift up our heads, lift up our heads, lift up our hearts, and realize in the midst of the judgment, God is still good. He's a good God. He's a good God. All over America, people are having problems. Brother Rick, I thought about this. In California, there's a church, I believe Jack Trebert is the pastor. They're being fined $5,000 a day because they're still having services. They're taking all the precautions just like we are. And yet they're being fined $5,000 a day. He said when they were shut down, Brother Grizzle, you can imagine this. He said, we, we lost a million dollars just in the few weeks that we were shut down. He said, I'm not talking about us. He said, I'm talking about our missionaries. He said, listen, we can't make it much longer. You say, preacher, what's going on? I'll tell you what's going on. There's a group of God's people that have stood and said, no more. They realize the law is bad, but God is good. God is good. You say, preacher, what do you mean the law is bad? When an abortion clinic is essential and the church is not, that's a bad law. When the pot places are open and the church can't be, that's a bad law. When the liquor store is open and the church can't be, that's a bad law. And I believe we're supposed to abide by the law of the land until it crosses the law of God. And when it crosses the law of God, we need to just stand and say, God is good. And forget about it, amen, and do what God would have us to do. I want you to listen to this. If something doesn't happen soon, inflation is going to be through the roof. I looked this up. I thought it was a long time ago, Brother Steve. How many of y'all know what a sheet of OSB is? Raise your hand if you do. If you don't, raise your hand. Be honest with me a minute, okay? Uh, that, what that stands for is Oriented Strand Board. It's a common board, Brother Preston. It's cheap, ain't it? I mean, it's something they nail on the studs on the outside of a house, wrap it in house wrap. It makes the house sturdy. It makes the house strong. And I thought it was years ago, but I looked this up. In 2018, a piece of OSB was $6. You know what it is right now? Listen to me carefully. I left here on Wednesday night a week ago, stopped by Lowe's. I was in my car. I can't haul a four by eight sheet, and I just wanted to check on them. It was $16 and something. I thought, that's ridiculous. When I got back the next morning, it was $19 and something, and I checked it yesterday. It was $21 and something. 
You say, preacher, what are you trying to say? Are you complaining? No, 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 no. I'm trying to say, listen, everything may skyrocket, but it ain't going to be long till the church is going to skyrocket. What we need to do is understand God is good. God is good. We used to buy green beans. My wife used to buy them for $12 a bushel and canned green beans. If you can find a bushel for under $45 right now, you're doing good. I'm telling you, beloved, listen, God is good. That's what Nahum said right in the middle of it all. There's an announcement. He's saying God is good. Listen to this. One of God's faithful missionaries, Alan Gardner, he experienced many physical difficulties and hardships through his service to the Savior. Despite his troubles, he said, while God gives me strength, failure will not daunt me. In 1851, at the age of 57, he died of disease and starvation while serving on Picton Island at the southern tip of South America. When his body was found, his diary lay nearby. It bore the record of hunger, thirst, wounds, and loneliness. The last entry in his little book showed the struggle of his shaking hand as he tried to write legibly. It read, I am overwhelmed with a sense of the goodness of God. You know what that does? That gives me hope that if this body has to lay somewhere and dry up with that dreaded disease called cancer, that I can lay there and tell the world, God is good. You say, preacher, how could you even imagine such a statement? I tell you how, because that would just mean I'm getting closer to that new body, that body, beloved, that'll never hurt, never suffer, never go to the doctor again, never weep, never sorrow, and never die. God is good. God is good. Nahum, in the middle of his message of judgment, he said, time out. I want to tell you something. God is good. Every one of us probably knows somebody. The trials of life did not make them a better Christian. It made them a bitter Christian. Brother Long, I ain't saying this to blow you up, but I admire you, my dear brother. And I know and you know that it's by the grace of God you're not a bitter man. There's people, beloved, that I've watched in this walk of life suffer and suffer and suffer and suffer. And I'm going to tell you something about it, beloved. Those that walk with God just get sweeter and sweeter and sweeter and sweeter because they know God is good. Why did God pull Joseph out of that prison? I'll tell you why. Because he wasn't down there murmuring. He wasn't down there complaining. Uh, he was down there realizing, Lord, there's an injustice been done. Uh, but you didn't do it. Uh, you're still good. You say, how long will God be good? He'll be good as long as he's God. God is good. Nahum, listen to me. You say, preacher, Let's see if you're still saying that when it's your children. Let's see if you're still saying that when it's your wife. Let's still see if you're still saying that when they tell you what's wrong. I'll tell you something right now. My situation's going to change. It changes every day. But I'm going to tell you what's not going to change. That is God is good. I will guarantee you, beloved, I've spoken to Brother J.W. on the phone. Laying in the bed, suffering. But I'll tell you what you will catch him doing. Bragging on Jesus. Because Jesus was real to him. Nahum was close to the Lord. In the midst of the judgment, he could say God is good. We're in the middle of a worldwide pandemic. Over 181,000 Americans have lost their lives. 
I'm going to say this. You look it up for yourself. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. A large, a very large percentage of those people were going to die anyway. If you don't know that this virus has been politicized, you're not paying attention. I mean, when a man dies in a motorcycle wreck and he's got COVID and he's listed as a COVID death, help me. One of the worst things they ever did was introduce something that's green into the equation. When you get so much if they're hospitalized and so much more if they go on a ventilator. You say, Pastor, you've lost your mind. No, I'm telling you, yes, there's a pandemic. And yes, there's a virus. But God is good in the midst of all of it. God is good. Hurricane has devastated parts of Louisiana and Texas. But I want you to know this. God is good. You can mark this down. There are people, Brother Steve, already on their way from Tennessee. There's still some good people in America. There are neighbors that will help neighbors. I saw where Samaritan's Purse, the tractor trailers, Brother Steve, are lined up and on the way. It's been a burden of your heart. I'm just telling you, beloved, yes, there's a devastating storm that's come. And with some, it'll reveal the worst. But with others, it'll reveal the best. God is good. What I'm trying to say this morning is God is good. Nahum made an announcement. He said, God is good. I must bring to you a message of judgment. But God is good. We find comfort in Nahum's announcement, God is good. The second thing, we find comfort in Nahum's encouragement. You say, preacher, how is this verse encouraging? Look with me, if you will, in verse number seven. He said, the Lord is good. Can somebody say amen right there? I'm thinking of a family right now and I won't say their names, but what they've been through. (laughs) Still able to say God is good. Then he said this, look at his encouragement. He said he's a stronghold in the day of trouble. You see, Nahum, he wasn't one that denied that there was trouble. Job said it, Brother Gail, like this man that's born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. Brother Gail told me yesterday on the phone, I believe you're 92, ain't you, Brother? 93. I'm 91. I'll be 92. He'll be 92. He said, I didn't, he said, I never did dream when I got in my 90s I wouldn't be able to go like I used to. Amen, brother. Amen, brother Gail. God didn't say there wasn't going to be any trouble. But God said, there's an anchor, a stronghold in the day of adversity, in the day of trouble. Listen to some of these verses, beloved. I don't want to bore you, but I hope they'll bless you. The Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. Exodus 15, 2. 1 Chronicles 16, 11. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. You say, preacher, where am I going to get strength? Seek the Lord. Seek his face. Not once in a while, but continually. 1 Chronicles 16, 27. Glory and honor are in his presence. Strength and gladness are in his place. Nehemiah 8, 10. Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet. Send portions to them who have nothing that's prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Nehemiah, or Nahum, he said, I have an announcement. But he said, I don't just have an announcement, I have an encouragement. You can have strength. 
You say, preacher, where am I going to get it? There's only one place. Paul, writing to the church at Corinth, he said, most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. He said, because in my weakness, his strength is made perfect. We'd swallow our pride every once in a while. We'd admit we're not as strong as we think we are. We'd admit we need his strength. Over and over and over, the Bible said, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusteth in him. I am helped, therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth. And my song, with my song, I will praise him. Corey Ten Boone said this. Often I've heard people say how good God is. We prayed that it would not rain for our church picnic and look at the lovely weather. Yes, God is good when he sends good weather. But God was also good when he allowed my sister, Betsy, to starve to death before my eyes in a German concentration camp. It's one thing to stand on the mountain and say God is good. It's another thing from the deep, dark valleys of life to say, listen, my circumstances have changed, but one thing's never going to change. My God is good. I am the Lord, he said, I change not. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Corey Tim Boone said, I remember on one occasion when I was very discouraged. Everything around us was dark. And there was darkness in my heart. I believe that's what Jesus is talking about in John chapter 14. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Years ago, I said, it's okay to be in trouble. Just don't let the trouble get in you. It's one thing to be dwelling in the darkness. It's another thing for the darkness to be dwelling in you. Corey said, I remember telling Betsy that I thought God had forgotten us. Listen, this is said by the one starving. No, Corey, said Betsy. He's not forgotten us. Remember his words. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those that fear him. Corey concludes, there is an ocean of God's love available. There's plenty for everyone. May God grant you never to doubt that victorious love, whatever the circumstances. I'm telling you, beloved, he loves you. He loves me. Those that were once in the house of God and now are in the far country, he loves them. Those that have never known Christ and the joy of forgiveness, sins forgiven, he loves them. Those that are being deceitful in our land, he loves them. I'm going to tell you something right now. We need a revival. We need a revival of the goodness and the mercy and the love of God. He's long-suffering. Say, preacher, I wouldn't put up with this mess. I'm glad you're not God. You probably wouldn't put up with me either. He's long-suffering. He's a merciful God, and he's good. Beloved, listen, this thing's going to wind down one day. Revelation 12, 10, I heard a voice, a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our God day and night. Many of God's people today, they're not possessed of the devil. They can't be. If you're God's people, you can't be possessed. But I tell you what you can be, oppressed. Put down. And God wants us to know in the middle of it all, he's good. His strength is available to every one of us. He wants to help us. He's a very present help in a time of need. Paul 
Paul one time said, we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, in so much as we despaired of life. The man of God in a place of despair. Elijah in a place of despair. John the Baptist, brother Long, who are we? In a place of despair. One that Jesus would say, not a greater has ever been born of women. Yet he said to his disciples, go ask Jesus, art thou he or should we look for another? I'm telling you, beloved, we're not home yet. It's not time to shine our halos and act like we don't have question marks sometimes. Don't act like we're defeated sometimes. Don't act like, beloved, sometimes we're despondent and in despair because God knows we are. But in the middle of the mess, message of judgment, well, I started to stop right there. I believe the Holy Spirit did in the middle of the mess. He says, God is good. God is good. There's a message here from Nahum to encourage us. There's a, an announcement. We ought to find comfort in that announcement. We ought to find comfort in this encouragement. Then the last thing this morning, we ought to find comfort in Nahum's acknowledgement. Brother, Larry, uh, Brother Gary, you just blessed my heart. I, I've never paid attention while I was preaching. But he, he just blessed my heart. You know what he's doing, Brother Steve? He's writing. You know what he'll be doing in the morning? He'll be going back and reviewing and chewing on this. Am I right, Brother? How many times have I called you on Monday morning? Well, you had to, brother. Oh, I'm just going over what you preached yesterday. You say you're trying to brag. No, 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 no. I'm trying to tell you there's a man that knows he didn't get it all the first time. So he'll just go after it again. Anybody that's ever preached the word of God wonders, why didn't I see that before? We didn't get it all the first time and we ain't gonna get it all the second time and we ain't gonna get it all the third time. We ain't gonna get it all till we get home. God is good. An announcement. A stronghold in the day of trouble and encouragement. Let's look and see what Nahum acknowledges now. He acknowledges, he know. He knoweth them that trust in him. You see, God knows who's trusting in him and who's trusting in the stock market. God knows who's trusting in him and who's trusting in the pastor. God knows who's trusting in him and who's trusting in their bank account. I'm gonna tell you something right now, beloved. The Lord knoweth them that trust in him. Every time a sinner repents, every time a saint of God runs into an obstacle and falls on their knees and says, God, I don't know the way, but you know the way, you're looking at somebody that's getting closer and closer and closer to God. I thank God, Brother Steve, that Nahum is a man that's walking close enough to God to hear verse seven in the middle of the mess. In the midst of the judgment, he hears God say, the Lord is good. A stronghold in the day of trouble and he knoweth them that are his. Just a couple of verses of scripture and I'll be done. The word of God said in Psalm 1-6, for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Brother Long, there was a time in my ministry when I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know which way to turn. I turned to other men of God. The Bible said there's safety in a multitude of counselors. I didn't want to miss God. 
I was reading Hebrews 11 one day and God said, Abraham obeyed me. He didn't know where he was going. I'm paraphrasing. And in an instant, God gave me direction. I can remember another time when I, I just didn't know which way to go. And I was reading through Psalm. Psalm chapter 1. And the Lord stopped me in the middle of this verse and these words, the Lord knoweth the way. I promise you, you're not going to walk with God very long, Brother Rose, till you're not going to know the way. But God knows the way. The Lord knoweth the way. He acknowledges, he knows those that trust in him. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, 2 Timothy 2, 19, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. 2 Peter 2, 9, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Friend of mine, I promise you this. If you have received Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he knows where you are. He knows your name. He knows what you're going through. And the songwriter said it right. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. Brother Grizzle, not too long ago, a couple months back, I believe they put you on a gurney, didn't they, Brother Grizzle, if I remembered. And he looked up and said, Lord, you're going to have to help me. Is that close, Brother Grizzle, to what you said? Brother Grizzle, the Lord didn't say, who is that? Wonder who, I don't know that voice. No, the Lord didn't say that. The Lord knew they'd been having a conversation every day for a long, long, long time. When Peter cried out to God, Lord, save me. God knew exactly where he was, knew he was seeking, knew he needed help. And he reached out there and he saved Peter that day. Peter's always criticized. But I'll say this, thank God Almighty he got out of the boat. Ain't nobody else can tell you what it's like to walk on water except Jesus. He got out of the boat. Acknowledgement. I find comfort in that. He knoweth them that are his. An announcement. Is our life announcing to the world and our families around us that God is good. It should be. An encouragement. Are we encouraged by the fact that God has a stronghold? The McCabe sang a song years ago, when the waves of trouble are over my head, they're under his feet. He knows. He cares. No one ever cared for us like Jesus we're going to have a song Charity y'all going to sing for me an invitation honey you can sing for Jesus I'll just get to enjoy it we're going to have a song it's an old song how many remembers a song entitled just a closer walk with thee I had a lady to text me last night her dad is in very bad shape and I asked her this question. I said, does your dad know the Lord? And this is what she said. She said, he does. I just wish he was closer. I sent her a note back and I said, sis, every one of us could be closer. Would somebody say amen? Thank God, Brother Long, Nahum was close that day. Preachers must come to the pulpit and they must preach judgment. It's right there in the book. But may God help us in the midst of wrath to remember mercy. 
what I deserved. Brother Gale at Landmark Baptist Church in Glade Spring, Virginia, February 22nd, 1987, in the evening service, I was sitting right where you're sitting in Glade Spring, Virginia. And all I deserved was judgment. That's all I deserved was justice. Justice called. I should have gone to hell. But thank God, mercy, Brother Ike, answered. God didn't just say, son, you know what you are, and you know that I know what you are. He said, knowing what you are, I want to tell you one more thing. I love you. I died for you. And if you'll trust me, I'll save you. Oh, listen, one of the hardest steps to take in your life is the first one. But oh, hallelujah. I found a God that was ready, willing, and able to forgive. Had mercy on my never dying soul. I don't know if y'all got this this morning or not. I'm not being a smart aleck. But please don't leave here without this thought in your mind. The Lord is good. If I'm laying in a hospital bed, Brother Steve, come by. I might need to be reminded. Brother Benoit, it's a bad situation. But you know God is good. The Lord is good. Amen. You say, preacher, you're not being realistic. Take that up with Nahum. He plugged this in. Actually, he didn't plug it in. He was just close enough to God to hear what God said. And he wrote it down right in the middle of a message of judgment. He said, I want you to know the Lord's good. He's a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knows them. He knows them that are his. Brother Ralph, I don't know Brother Jerry like you know him. He's your brother. But I thank my God he's allowed our paths to cross. And Brother Ralph, I want you to know if God touches your brother and raises him up, heals him, I'll say God is good. But if our God takes your brother home, won't it be good to know, Brother Ralph, what his heart was in his last days? And be able to say God is good. Won't it be wonderful to be able to see his wife and his mother-in-law saved by the grace of God? Because that dear man got his heart right with God. Brother Gail, I just want to tell you one more time, brother. This is the case I leave here for you, do. The Lord is good. Amen. I love you, brother. Appreciate you. Trent, I see you back there, buddy. You think you're hiding. But don't you ever forget it, son. God is good. You'll go through some tough things in this life. Miss Connie, we'll go through some things that are hard to swallow. But God is good in the midst of all of it. Amen, Miss Amanda. God is good. God is good and Neelan is hungry. Amen. They're going to sing this morning. I've asked them to sing this song and maybe you've heard it, maybe you haven't. But maybe you're not as close to the Lord as you once were. Maybe you wouldn't have heard the voice of the Lord the way Nahum did in the middle of the message of judgment. Maybe in the middle of this mess we're in in America, you got your chin down, your head down. Maybe your family's going through something, a trial, 
a trial of the faith. Maybe you had not looked at it like something that's precious. But God said it's precious. God speaks to your heart and you're lost, please. Come to this altar. If God speaks to your heart and you're a child of God, yet you know you've drifted off. Come to this altar. All you'd have to do is from an honest heart say, God, I don't have to tell you. I ain't as close to you as I once was. I don't have the joy I once did. Maybe you're here and you're at a crossroads and you don't know which way to go. It'd be all right just to tell Jesus, Jesus, I don't know what to do. Would you show me what to do? Let's bow for prayer. Father in heaven, speak to hearts in this invitation. Help us, Lord, to be obedient to thy precious will. Bless the ladies as they sing. Bless our hearts together, Lord, as we worship. Lord, as the dear lady said in the text, I just wish you were closer. God, may you grant every one of us a closer walk with thee. In Jesus' name. They're going to sing. If you need this altar, I beg you in Jesus' name, don't be ashamed. Just come. 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 Would you come?